there, happy Tuesday. Welcome to another craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here live uh, every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so tonight we're continuing on the swan embroidery. We are turning this into a hand quilted zipper pouch. So we got to the point last night that we were able to cut out the shape. Uh, so now we're going to start the back. I'm gonna use this as the template for the back of the pouch, the, the opposite side of the pouch. So, all right, let's get going on that tonight. Thank you guys again for joining. All right, we got all the stuff going on here. Hello, hello, everyone. Okay, so uh, I got the frame. We don't actually need that quite yet, so I'm gonna scooch that off to the side with the little frame parts. Here is the, uh, uh, the bag so far. So we cut out the shape. Uh, the zipper will be on a curve on the top and we're making like these little box pleats at the at the bottom basically so here's the back uh, we won't actually ever see this ultimately because i'm going to put a lining in here but right now i want to use this t as a template for the back so let's prep the back stuff it's going to be like another little mini quilt basically uh, so I want to press the fabric and I want to, I guess I have this uh, piece of scrap batting here uh, that we're going to use and uh, we will pin these together as if we're basting a real quilt and then uh, uh, we will trace that pattern on our, our shape and then we will be able to start stitching at that point. Uh, well, we're going to do like a little scalloped edge on it. Oh, is this like... Oh, this is like one long piece. So this is like scrap fabric that I have just because, you know, there's like little flaws and this is a little bit of red, red um, thread in there. So that's basically why I have it around to use. And uh, let's just give the whole thing a quick press. It looks like I have to cut down my shape. So I think I'm going to just do it as big as my batting piece. And I'm going to just roughly cut this out it's going to be fine however we do it because ultimately we're going to cut it down quite a bit. Can I use fusible lining on it? You absolutely could uh, use fusible lining on, on this, like a fusible web. It comes in like different thicknesses for bag making. I haven't done a lot with that before. Uh, I did use it on that bag, this bag here. My um, craft a happy life bag this did use a, a like a soft uh, like a fusible fleece almost uh, I'm not doing that for this one if I wanted this more sturdy I could but we already have the three layers we have the batting and uh, the two layers of fabric plus there'll be a lining so it'll be pretty bulky already so I don't think I need I don't think I need it however if I did want this like a super sturdy standing up uh, piece I think that would be probably good although you know we did this one pretty similarly this has batting and two pieces and this this is pretty sturdy it stands up just fine so I'm thinking it'll be a lot like this so I, I don't think we actually need it in there but you totally could still okay I'm gonna just cut around our piece here and then I'm gonna just cut another one I don't think we needed be any more advanced than that. Let's trim. Definitely does not need to be perfect. All right, let's call that a piece and we'll just go right next to it. So, then I'll have a little extra fabric left over for scrap use. Okay, 
So here are my scraps. And uh, good, now we have our two pieces. Like so. Um, I'm going to pin it. So normally I would kind of stretch out the back a little bit, the back fabric. Uh, like if I was doing this as a real quilt, I would tape that down, but we're pretty flat. I don't think I need all that extra. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna bunch up in the back. So I'm gonna just grab my curved safety pins. So this is, these are like my basting pins. I can see your comments. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to just sprinkle a few of these on here. We're just doing the same thing as if we would uh, a quilt. Just holding our three pieces of fabric together. Our, well, our three pieces. So the back fabric, the front fabric, and the batting. So I'm just starting in the middle and kind of smoothing it out. We've got a couple more in here. This is just to hold everything in place while we stitch, and then it'll go away. Feels good to be this far on this project, though, that's for sure. Gina's asking, don't I de need my design on? Uh, theoretically, um, I'm going to just try and draw my design right over um, these these pieces, these uh, pins. We'll just see how that goes. So I don't know really how many of these I need because I, I need them a little far away from the edge. So, ooh, did I even make this big enough? Oh yeah, it's going to barely fit on here. <laughs> Uh, maybe that was a reason that I had such a big piece of fabric. I should have just cut the fabric in half and been done with it. So we're going to be, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get this on, on my, um, frame. So that's kind of, I should have been paying a little bit closer attention to that. So it might be a little tighter on the frame than I like, especially because I, I want that, um, loose that loose feel when I stitch, so that was probably an error, so we'll see. All right, so I'm just trying to, there we go. <laughs> Jumped out of there. I'll probably move these pins, but for now I think it's fine. Okay. So the reason I didn't draw the pattern on yet is because I'm going to draw the outline on first, I think, and then I'm going to putz around with the pattern. So that's, that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to grab a uh, water soluble marker here. Of course, I'm going to close that up. That's a disaster waiting to happen. All right. So I'm going to just trace this. Hopefully this is good enough. I'm sure. I'm sure it will be. I'm going to just trace this design right on to the back here. And this is just going to be, this is going to be my guide. And however this ends up is what it's going to be. <laughs> Typically, if I was starting this project from scratch, I would have this template all figured out and uh, um, cut all my pieces all at once, including like the lining fabric, and they'd all be kind of waiting around, or at least like I'd have the template drawn on. But since we're kind of doing this as we go, we're just kind of, we're gonna just, you know, use what we can. And right now it's this last piece, but I think this is, this is working fine. I don't see any problem yet doing it this way. 
the nice thing is that with all this batting, it's going to be so poofy and stuff that um, I think if we have little errors here and there, because if sizing is like a hair different, I think we'll still be fine. Kind of going in between my pins here. All right, let's see. Let's see if that worked. Okay, there we go. So now I'd like to draw the pattern on. And I might I think I'm actually going to move my pins a bit now. I'm going to move them so they're all just kind of outside the stitch area except for that middle one. I think that'll be helpful just to get these a little bit more out of the way while we stitch. But I don't want them too close to the edge cuz we still got to try and get get this around the um, the Q snaps our frame. I think this will do the job though. I do wish I left more fabric here uh, so it would be looser in the frame but too late I guess. All right I'm gonna actually turn this one sideways and as well. Well, I suppose that one's probably fine. This one I'm going to just bring in a hair. Okay, so there's our shape. So next up, I wanted that scalloped edge. And I'm wondering if the best way to do that, and I wanted to do it like upside down. Remember I had um, in my my project tracker sheet, I had uh, drawn the scallops this way, but then I was thinking, oh, if we drew the scallops like upside down, then they'd almost look like waves, which kind of kind of go with our little water situation here, I think. Yeah, I think upside down ones. Okay, so we need to make a uh, um, little design here, and I'm kind of thinking, we use, oh, I have, well, yeah, let's not use that. I think I have, oh yeah. So I, oh, look, <laughs> I have something very close to a scallop. I'm like, let's use this postcard that we can cut up. I put, I have something very close to a scallop on here. Actually thinking we want it a little bit bigger though. So I think all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a fold on here. I'm gonna think about how wide do I want my scallops. So, um, I don't know, I probably want like three on here. So about this wide, I'm just gonna estimate. I don't, I'm not gonna really measure. So maybe, maybe I want them a little bit wider. So maybe about this wide. So I'm gonna just fold this. We're winging it here, like I said. I'm gonna just fold this on here and let's just cut a scallop shape out of here. Like, I'm just gonna go like that. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna grab the paper scissors. I'm not even gonna draw it. Let's just eyeball the... Let's eyeball this stuff. I can always trim. All right, so we did like half of a scallop there. So I'm gonna unfold it and <laughs> There's our shape so far. So I think it's a little square. I think I'm gonna curve these edges a little bit more. Oh, and we want it like this way. So we'll, we'll probably start up here. So I probably want them a little smaller too. So let's, let's improve our arc. still pretty big huh but I do kind of like it like I don't want to um, I I do kind of want these a little bit smaller just because I mean not too small because then it's less stitching for us but there that's that's kind of decent shape so I kind of like this let's let's use it like this um uh, Oh yeah, I could have just used this as an arc. That's true. Let's see how I'm at. 
Eh, I think I think we're good enough. Round enough. There'll be a little wider ones. So I think I might actually mark. Well, should I just eyeball it or should I actually mark lines and uh, like the center point? Maybe I'll mark like the center of this piece. Let's just get a ruler out here. Because then I can make sure like the middle scallops are all the same at least. So how big is this even? Okay, it's like nine inches. So I'm gonna mark the four and a half inch point. So I'm not gonna be able to do that up there, but let's do a couple in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna just connect these to get a middle kind of up here. There we go. So middle is kind of marked now. I think that's gonna be a little helpful. So now I just kind of want to kind of start in the middle here. I do have the fold as a middle point on my template here. I'm gonna just draw, I'm gonna just draw one of these guys. Let's see what happens. I kind of like the idea of this being a little bit more airy on the back, like larger shapes because we were so densely stitching on the front. Okay, now in theory, let's keep this level too. So let's, let's put, um, that looks pretty straight there. So let's scooch the next one like so. Okay, I didn't make that. Well, maybe it is level. Hold on, let's let's straighten this bottom again. Okay, and right like so. So far, so good, right? This is this is scallopy, upside down scallops. There, so we just stitch like that here. I don't know if you guys can actually see. I'm gonna zoom you. Zoom you on down here. Okay, so what we've done so far is put three scallops on. And now let's do the next row down. So I think all I'm gonna do is put my edge at that center point there. which is basically the center of this piece, which would make it the center of this too. So let's just draw the next one. Again, these are gonna be pretty big. We could always put like a little shape in the inside of them too, if we, if we feel like it. Okay, then one on this side. This is cute. So they're a little tall. I maybe didn't have to make them so tall, but who cares? They're just tall. Might actually be kind of pretty. We could actually maybe even add a second row or something since they're since they're tall. That would be kind of pretty. Or not. Let's just keep going. All right. So here's I'm lining my center line on the center uh, these center points again. That looks pretty good. Oh, Tracy, uh, Tracy says I came late. Why are you making curves? I am starting the back. So this is the back of the, um, 
design. So here's the front. We already did the front. And now I have to make a back. So I, I wanted to make a scalloped edge. So we're just kind of making scallops by scratch here. From scratch. Okay, so this is a... I didn't go quite all the way to the end here, but that's the like quarter inch seam allowance anyway. So I might actually just draw like up to that quarter inch seam allowance like that. Because I don't need to stitch all the way in there. Because it'll be sewn sewn shut there. Same thing this side. I'm not gonna just I'm just not gonna bring my line all the way to the edge. Okay, then um, the last little bit. So we won't have all the scallops here. Like this will be the bottom. So this this whole bit where it bumps in, that's all gonna be at the bottom. So this we're just gonna get a couple little lines in here. You're not gonna see all the scallops edges. The big design part would be in in this is this area. So this is a less important area for sure. Okay, we got a we have a little scallop design going now. All right, so there we are. Um, uh, it is pretty big, which is kind of what I was going for. Um, there is opportunity to like maybe add a little bit. Like we could add like a little shape on the inside here, maybe. I don't want to get too crazy though. I like the idea of it being open. So why don't we do this? There's potential to make more shapes in here. However, I might want it not like that, right? I might want it just these lines. So why don't we stitch all these lines first? And if I still feel like when I'm done with all this that I want like a little bit extra, like another, um, you know, little shape on the inside or something or like doubling up the line or whatever. If I want any of that, I can decide to do that. Um, after. Like a, a little teardrop shape in here would be kind of cool. Uh, that would be neat, but I can still make that decision when we're done. So let's let's just start stitching on this. And I think I think we can do how we've done the rest of this project, is make decisions along the way here. Yeah, Petty says less is more sometimes. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm like, I might just want it hardly anything. So why, why putz with it too much? So all right. So uh, like I said, I didn't, I don't think I cut this piece big enough. I'm gonna get a little higher up here. Um, I don't, I don't need this anymore either. I, I put the cutting board down just so I didn't scratch my table when it's already mega scratch, but um, so I don't scratch it anymore when I put the pins in. Let's just double check the back that everything's good. Yeah, all right, should have done that before, but we're fine. Okay, so I wish I would have left a little bit more fabric on the sides but I didn't, so let's see how well this clamp does without holding hardly any fabric, and I suspect it's gonna do very well still. These things, buggers are tight. So I am just gonna kinda grab a tish of this fabric. Yeah, I'm barely grabbing any of the fabric, and I think this is gonna hold totally fine. Yep, we're still pretty loose in there, which is just what I want. All right, I'm feeling good. Um, so I think we can just start stitching, right? So let's let's um, get all our supplies out and I'm gonna just start stitching these little arches. I guess that's what we do, right? I don't, I don't think I have to do anything different than that. Okay, let's grab my supplies, my goodies out of here. Oh, a little daisy shape in the middle of the curved shape. Yeah, yep, that's a bit too much. Um, but the reason I did is because I was using it as a guide for the, a template for the back. Okay, got my needle minder. Um, my needle is on there. These are extra needles. I'm just gonna keep them in my bag for now. Don't want those running away from me. And let's get some thread. Alright, get that back in there and 
<laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tie that little knot on one of the ends. And that's the knot that will like pop through to the front. Okay, needle, you're up next. Yay, I'm excited. Um, I wasn't sure that I would actually be stitching tonight. I didn't know how long it would take to plan out this pattern. So this is great. I'm, I'm happy we're started right away. We got some real big scallops here. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be just right, actually. They're actually a little bit smaller than the swan shape. So there is precedent for something this big because I think it reflects a little bit the size of the swan. We'll see. It might be too little. Or it might be just right. Okay. Let's... I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down, I suppose. So I'm gonna come from the inside a little bit and go up to my starting point. Again, I'm kind of leaving a quarter inch seam allowance because it's gonna be sewn in. No need to stitch extra. Okay, right, let's pop that knot in. Ooh, that one took a little pull. A little more pull than I thought. All right, let's do it. Got my hand underneath. Oh, I'm feeling good about this already. Up. Ooh, that's actually... We're close to the edge here, so it's a little... Not as easy for me to get vertical with that needle. But I'm going to try and get nice and little stitches, but, you know... Do my best, I suppose. Again, it take it's it's typically has taken me about twenty minutes or so before I start getting like the real pretty stitches. I think with these curves, I can't do that many stitches either because I need to be curving. This is going to be a little bit difficult to see what it looks like on the front this time because we have all these blue lines everywhere uh, but we can peek at the back to get a sense of what it looks like and if we'll need extra eh, I don't want to break my needle that that seemed like it was under stress there so we'll just do like two stitches pull two stitches pull I think that'll that'll work I'll get you guys a little closer again so you can see all the baby stitches happening. Whoa, I'm flinging, flinging the needle again. All right, that felt pretty. my time to start up after I pull the thread through. That feels really awkward yet, um, the motions and stuff for that. So I'll have to move some of this stuff out of the way. I'll have to practice getting good at that. So after I finish this first scallop, I, just, I already want to just peek at the back and see what this looks like. Oh, uh, Sylvie's asking, what time is the start of the show in California? It would be two hours behind me, so it would be 6.30, I believe. 6.30 p.m. Two hours behind in, in Cali. Uh-oh. Got stuck on that pin. I suppose that I suppose that'll be my last stitch. I'm gonna just kind of go in the one more stitch worth, but I'm gonna shimmy sham up to where I want to start the next stitch, which will be right here to start this next next bit. But before I get too far, I just want to flip this around. Oh, it looks. 
looks better than I thought. Look at it. Okay, you can totally see that. It is completely noticeable. That's pretty. So uh, the reason I'm flipping it over to the back is... Um, Ooh, the stitches look good on the back, too. Uh, they look better on the back than the front. Hey, this could technically be the, the front if we wanted it to. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, but I wanted to flip it around because this side doesn't have any of those lines that I drew on. So it's kind of hard to see how it's looking with all those blue lines in the way. But without them, I mean, that looks pretty dang cute. I can, uh, I thought it was just gonna, I, I thought I wasn't gonna hardly be able to see anything, but I think we're gonna actually see these scallops really, really nicely. And then here's it from, from the front again. I guess you can see it pretty nicely there too, but I get distracted with the blue. All right, let's, let's get this next bit a try. Oh, Patty, I'm with you. Like, figuring out how to use a thimble has been, like, on my list for a while. Um, specifically, what's helped me with this um, hand quilting has been these thimble lady thimbles. Uh, they're, they're a bit different. First of all, um, if you have nails, <laughs> like longer nails, you can... You can go all the way through like this. It's measured for the size of your finger. So I have the small one here. Uh, they, she has a measurement tool so you can get it just the right size for you. I mean, they're, they're pricey, but I'm really kind of liking, I'm, I'm really liking them actually a lot. And the holes are bigger. So it can grab the needle from more angles. Um, with a normal thimble, you'd be going like this, right? Um, but this, you're going like this. So my, my, my um, fingers are straighter. I'm not going to get like weird cramps in my hands from having to go like this a lot. I have not figured out those like a traditional needle or thimble very well, but this I've been really trying to get used to these thimble lady ones and really enjoying it so far. Clearly, I'm not the most coordinated person with it yet, but. I am a work in progress for this, for sure. Oops. But the deeper, ugh, that's a little series of them I don't like. Um, the, the deeper holes allow me to flip back and forth pretty easily. Ah, come on now. Actually, I can get rid of this one already because I've stitched I've stitched everything in place there. I'll probably get rid of this one soon too. I'm telling you, these look oodles better than than uh, when I started, <laughs> when I started this project. Actually, I'm remembering, um, it just came to me where this whole hand quilting thing started like brewing in my brain. And that, that was with, um, oh gosh, it had to be the second, maybe, maybe it was the first splendid sampler. I think it might've been the first splendid sampler yet. There was one, um, Nah, no, it was the second Splendid Sampler, but it was a while back. Uh, there's, there was a block that we did hand quilting like this instead of the machine quilting like we had been doing for the rest of the blocks. And it was something I had wanted to try, and holy cow, did was that rough. I did not do well, but uh, like they're, they're crazy. I think that's the block that I bled on, too. <laughs> so uh, there's that. But... Um, but it was exciting. Like I, I could see the possibility of really enjoying it. So dug into it a little bit more and then this project came up like, oh, this would be a good, good project to practice, give it a try for real. And, um, and it has been, we've, I've gotten a bunch of practice on this 
clearly still need a pile more, but it's feeling good. <laughs> I think this would actually probably be a lot easier on my lap to potentially, it's maybe a little awkward. It's sitting on the table here like this. Oh, I just can't get it. There we are. Or not. Whew, jeez. That one was rough. Uh, Gretchen says, I've auditioned many thimbles, and she loves the clother leather bands. I think I actually have... Oh, I've, I've, I've gone through one of those, but I didn't use it for this. I used it for, like, stuffing stuffed animals. It was helpful to have a thimble on for that, so I've, I've used those before, but not for the actual use. Actually, I didn't... That I The leather ones I had... I, I've poked through with the needle, so I don't know. Oh, uh, Patty says, peroxide on a rag will take out the blood if you ever need to. I think it ended up being on uh, the cell. Oh, no, it might be on the back still. Maybe I'll give that a try. Or maybe it'll just be a remnant of the project. Ooh, I'm stuck for some reason. Did I? There we go. I'm gonna have to peek at the back again. Or maybe I'll just, I'll go until this thread is out. I'm kind of hoping I can get all the way over to here with this one thread. I don't know if I'll make it. But yeah, when this thread is done, I'll take a peek. All right, we're almost to that quarter inch seam allowance. So I think this will be my last stitch here. Yeah, I'm beyond the quarter inch seam allowance, as long as I'm not beyond the cut line. All right, so I'm gonna go make that sort of last stitch shape and then go in the middle of my fabrics up to my starting point again, right about there. Oh, it's pretty, oh, it's so pretty. Okay, it's fun to, this was a good experiment. Um, compared to the the front. It was a good experiment to see what does it look like if I space things way out. Because again, this was really dense circles around around the shape. Not circles, but like echoing around the embroidery. So this is quite a different look, but you really get a sense of these shapes. It's really kind of pretty. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just keep with these big shapes. But that's what I wanted to, this was a good experiment because, you know, we were talking about, ooh, like, uh, what if we did a whole cloth quilt that was like this or, or something? And it, it's the leaving the negative spaces, like these big open spaces, that you're able to, like, see shapes come forth. I feel like on the front piece, um, it's a little harder to see um, see much. It just looks like a pile of stitches, really, I think, which is fine, too. But leaving these open spaces, I think, is really making the shapes nice. Oh, I'm so excited for this. It still might need a little extra fun shape on the inside later, but for now, I'm happy with how it's looking. Oops, that was a pretty big stitch. I guess it's just gonna be. Oh, uh, Gretchen's asking, what's a whole cloth quilt? That's basically a quilt that is like all one color. Like it's not even qu a quilt. I mean, it's not like, it's not pieced, right? There's not, there's not blocks that are sewn together or anything. It's just one giant piece of fabric. I mean, maybe maybe you have to sew smaller pieces to make the big piece, but it's one giant piece of fabric that's one color. So a big white sheet, um, you know, with batting and then another white sheet underneath or whatever. So the only thing that's making any designs in it is the quilting, whether it's machine quilted or hand quilted or embroidered really, I suppose, but that, I mean, 
that's sort of you'd be quilting it with embroidery, I suppose. Um, so a whole cloth quilt just means it's one giant piece of fabric that's quilted. Yeah, Nolan says a single piece of fabric quilted. That's that's a nicer succinct way of saying it. But if you Google it or something, they're incredibly beautiful. Just subtle and, uh, but beautiful. And I mean, it's immediately apparent, at least to me, at least, uh, how much work <laughs> went into them. Like just knowing that, especially hand stitch ones, I mean, actually even machine, machine done ones that all of that is you know, someone did all that for an entire quilt. I mean, I suppose you are for a normal quilt too, but just, um, just being able to highlight it, showcase it really, um, is pretty kind of cool. All right. So I'm going to take the jewelry off here <laughs> and, uh, I, I have a little bit more, but I'm at a good spot to start fresh. So I'm not going to actually first remove these guys. I don't think I need those anymore. The moment I have enough stitching to hold an area together, I don't really need the, the pins holding anything together anymore. Okay. So I'm going to finish this thread here. So I got to make that knot that's like a little over a stitch length away. And then I'm going to pop it through. Oh, Nolene says it can be colored, like it doesn't have to be a white fabric, um, but have no seams at all, only the quilted pattern. Um, oh, you know, it would be, ugh. Okay, so now I want to do one. I mean, an all white one would be just incredibly beautiful, I think, but um, think of like, what if one was like your favorite color, like a really beautiful, like rich, pretty color? Like, what about like a deep, <laughs> like a deep red or something? And then it, you're, your stitching was red too. Like what if, um, like just think how that's like a queen's bed then at that point, that's some luxury shenanigans there. All right. It is looking so good. You guys, I am so happy with it so far. So that's the front and, um, ugh, here's the back kind of what it would look like without any of the lines in. It is looking so lovely, I think. Ugh! All right, I'm gonna keep going. What we could have probably done is clipped like an inch off of these, and then, then the scallops would have been like a little just shorter, but I don't know. This is unique, I suppose. It does leave it kind of open for us to do something on the inside here. Like we could do like a double scallop almost. Where'd my little thing go? Again, I'm probably not gonna do anything yet, but like we could do, like just put this a little lower and do like a second scalloped edge. So it would be like a double, a double scallop on, on all these. That'd be kind of cute. We get a little poof in there and we'd still have our big shape. So I'd be, I'd be open to maybe that idea, um, later. Cause I think the proportions of, of our scallops would like right now, I feel like they're a little tall, which is fine. Um, but having another one kind of slid up there a little bit would maybe give the impression of like maybe a more normal shaped scalp. It's an idea. All right. Um, for now, I need more thread. Ooh, um, like a muslin earthy whole cloth. Ooh, yeah, like what? A, like a, like almost like a like a rich, like a deep khaki color, or even like, <laughs> even like a, uh, like a chipboard color like this, like a, like a deep kind of color like that would be gorgeous. Like you could do like, what if it had like wildflowers all over it? Like that, that would be the quilting or something just like long leafy viney 
wildflowers. <laughs> I don't know. That would be pretty. Ooh, that'd be pretty. Gretchen says, like, dyeing fabric with tea, but that made me think of what if you had a solid piece of fabric, but it was, like, hand-dyed, so it looked really mottled, so, um, so it would still be one cloth, but it, it wouldn't be, like, tie-dyed, but it'd be, like, have darker and lighter areas, like, like, a little mottled, the, uh, I'm not able to tie a knot this way, so we're going to put the needle on and, and do it. Ooh, Sylvia says you can dye cloth with onions. That makes, um... Isn't it, like, doesn't that do, like, a funny thing? Like, isn't... Don't, like, purple onions make, like, a bright lime color when you dye? I thought it was something kind of interesting like that. Okay. Now I'm going to tie this knot. I'm going to wrap it around the needle twice and then pull through. Instead of me trying to tie a little knot at the end, that wasn't working. There we go. Got myself a knot. That's how I should have probably been doing it all along. All right, so I'm going to start at the, the next little blip here. I'm not sure I have enough thread for all of these this time because there's more surface area in all these than, than we just did, but um, we'll see. So I'm going to start on the inside again somewhere and uh, I'm just going to like that quarter inch area I don't need to go closer than that oh popped popped it through both places let's try that again just through that first one. There we go. Okay, get the gear on. All right, I'm gonna remove this because I know he's gonna be trouble. Still not really used to holding the needle with the silicone grip. It feels just silly still. I feel like I'm grabbing it goofy. All right, let's get going. on my blue line. Ooh, those are some baby stitches. Interesting. Um, Patty says, I use a piece of thread the width of my arm stretched out, and that's about a yard, and then you keep track of how many yards in the quilts. That's kind of interesting. I like all that little, little, uh, like, strategy planning type stuff. All right, I'm having a hard time getting started with this. I keep stabbing my finger on the back, and not able to tilt it up very easily. That's the part that I need practice on, I think. And I keep, I could probably get one more stitch on, but because of the curve, I'm not, oop, shoot, sorry. And I'm kind of just nervous about breaking my needle. Yeah, that one 
only got one more on. Those are some itty bitty stitches though. I think my 20 minute warm up has happened. I'm, I'm getting some baby stitches on here. Oh, Gretchen says, my grandma Lund also always said our thread should always be just the length of our forearm. forearm. <laughs> Happy memory. Oh, that's a short piece. I suppose that's that's good. Then you're um, not pulling so far, which could be rough on the shoulders. Ooh, these stitches are looking small. That's our last stitch here. So I'm gonna do that little fake stitch and then shimmy sham through the center of these. I gotta kinda go quite a ways though. Oh, I guess right there. I can just grab it. All right. That tip, um, I forget who said said it, but that tip of, you know, when it touches your finger underneath, that's when you tilt that up, and then the same thing when it touches your thumb, when it comes back up, tilt it right back down again. Um, that's really helping me get these nice little stitches. They are looking great tonight. I am loving it. This going towards me is really helpful too. That was a good, good tip too. That's why I do all my learning, all my trying and practicing new things with you guys here because someone's always gonna know more than me, and, and that's, that's helpful, for sure. This one's gonna have all teeny tiny stitches. I knew I was jinxing myself by saying that out loud. I am going to get rid of you, though, now. Actually, I think I might just scooch you over to here. aim very well there. There we go, that's on my line. pushing that one. That felt like I was bending the needle a little bit more than I 
should, so maybe I won't do that many stitches all at once. That's awesome. Luann says, I finally remembered to print out the raccoon. It's so cute. Oh, I'm glad you did. I I am loving seeing you guys' photos of that uh, raccoon sampler come in. They're turning out so nice. We'll have to schedule a time to, to stitch, stitch that up here, too. Oh, that makes sense, Amy. Um, doing the, so that Amy's saying, I, I think you're, I'm just seeing your comment now. I think you're referring to the doing um, just up to your forearm length of length of thread. And, uh, oh gosh, I can't get this positioned right. And you're saying then if the thread breaks, then it's only that one small length a forearm's length that has to be repaired eventually, not like three feet, like, I don't know, I don't know how much I'm doing, but not like a huge amount. So that's a really good point. So maybe, maybe I should be doing shorter pieces just in case, you know, for some reason, like one little stitch would break that would basically unravel that whole thing, right? But if it's only the length of my forearm here, you know, so like, I don't know, 12 inches, 14 inches or so, or whatever, then um, there's less to repair if need be. That makes a lot of sense. All right, up here. I haven't peeked at the back of this one yet. Just trying to make it through. Oh yeah, then there's less wear on the thread too. Because every time you pull the thread through the fabric, that's like a lot of friction and um, it's a little bit of abuse on the thread each time. A little bit of wearing away of the thread. So it gets more ragged and frayed as you go and weakens it. So smaller, smaller pieces for that reason too are still smart. Yeah. I'm surprised at how little fabric I needed in these Q snaps to securely hold this. Like, there's barely any fabric, like maybe a half inch in some of this. All right, getting there with this thread. Still super happy we're working on this project this week. 
I mean, we're getting really far on this. I mean, technically, if we just stick to... I don't think we'll finish it, but, like, I don't know. If, if this is all we did, these scallops, I mean, we might be able to finish them tomorrow and then um, still have a couple days to make the whole zipper pouch? I don't know. If we worked on this the couple days that we have available next week, too, this might be a finished project. That would be kind of fancy, man. I'm going to go until this thread is done. I know we're a little over here. Maybe I'll have enough thread for this whole thing. Let's cut it a little close. jump up. I'm going to just go however far I can on this scallop and then we'll probably call that scallop done. It's close to the side so um, you know a quarter inch will be sewn in anyway. So we'll just use up this thread. Get in there guy. Yeah, we'll have enough to shimmy sham up here. Good. Then we'll take a peek at the back. And yeah, I don't know. This might, uh, we might finish this up. Oh, I'm not. Uh, Noli and I, I haven't used my thread conditioner with this, so that would be something. Maybe I should, maybe I should do that. stitches and that's that. All right, I think we're done. Let's um I'm going to do that little knot at the end. I think next time I will use the shorter thread. I that seems like a good habit just the length of the forearm just in case something does break then I, that is a, just a smaller repair not that I'm expecting any of these little stitches to break but uh, it is just like these little running stitches really so I think they'd come out pretty easily if one broke there pop that through All right, two good little scalloped edges there. Let's flip it around. Looking pretty. It is looking nice. And I'm, I mean, we're cruising through this. We did all of this tonight, plus we planned out this whole thing. So I think we could easily finish this stitching tomorrow. And then we just have to decide if we want to get fancier. Like, do we want to add an extra thing or do we want to just leave it? I mean, maybe it's fine. Let's see what it looks like on the back again. I mean, that's plenty fine for the back of, um, back of this. I mean, really we wouldn't need anything else. I mean, it would be pretty to add a little bit extra, but we wouldn't need it. So we could just finish it up and start sewing this guy together. I mean, we could finish this. <laughs> That'd be kind of awesome. All right, I'm going to flip you guys around. Yeah, so this is going quite a bit faster than I was expecting and drawing this whole thing out. So I'm really happy with our progress tonight. Uh, I know we went a little long <laughs> so I could finish up that thread, but it is, it's looking, it's looking good. Yeah, you can see those little, little scallop edges starting. 
Uh, man, I just love the idea of doing a whole quilt like this at some point. Uh, this is definitely good, a good warm up, good practice. Um, yeah, so check out that swan embroidery. I do have this available as a kit now. This was actually an embroidery of the month from last year. Uh, actually, maybe two years ago, December. This is our first ever embroidery of the month, and I now have it available as a kit. Uh, so check that out in the shop. And then it's this is this embroidery of the month, uh, embroidery of the month for June, and uh, that's going to be coming to an end soon. Uh, next week, you guys. Next week is going to be July already, if you can believe it. So um, that kit will be uh, done soon. So that'll go away in July. So, all right. Thank you guys again for joining me. Uh, just checking out any other little questions here, but I think we are good. Uh, all right. I will be back here again tomorrow on YouTube and Facebook at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So have a great evening. Good night, everyone.